these guns can get beaten up pretty badly when we're hunting out here so when we do get opportunities in the morning like this with no wind and when we have a bit of time um, I do like to just put that little steel gong out at 50 meters and just confirm zero it just not only gives you peace of mind for the day but also um, yeah it's the humane thing to do it's the right thing to do so let's take a few shots and make sure everything's set up and we can start slowly packing up and heading out on our hunt the other thing we need to do um, obviously I'd like to use the small compact impact also so we're gonna take off the thermal that we used last night and put this little guy back on the immersive series 5x30 from element optics um, this has proven to be awesome for especially for close range stuff so I'm gonna pop this off quick disconnect mounts make it nice and easy and then put this back in its case and this guy goes back on Oh, dead center. Just goes to show if you use a one piece mount like this, mounted in the same place with similar torque specs, you don't really need to worry about much. That was a confirmation of zero if, if, if ever I've seen it. Take another one or two shots here. Same spot. Oh my goodness. I don't know what else to say other than chef's kiss. <laughs> awesome. That's three shots off a sandbag standing after putting the scope back on. We used that same gun with the with the thermal last night. That's absolutely ridiculous. You mean look at this. That is my fingernail over there. It's crazy, right? I think it's pretty crazy. Oh, right on top of each other. We could have played with these tack drivers all morning, but we've got some monkeys to slay, and so we prepared to leave our camp with a quick coffee to inject us with some energy before packing up the Easy On Blade and hitting the road. Uh, I see him, I see him. You are just under the distance. There you go, our first monkey of the day. Came around this corner here, saw some movement under a tree. Monkeys climbed up into the tree. Uh, with this little gun, I literally had a couple seconds to take a shot and it's, that's what this is perfect for. Um, the bigger scopes are nice for longer shots. You can take your time dialing, getting parallax perfect and really be very specific with shot placement. But sometimes you just need to take a quick shot and uh, this monkey gave me a split second. Uh, I put the, the crosshairs right on his head because I estimated he was around 40 to 60 meters. Uh, pulled the trigger and he dropped straight down. So very happy with that. The shot went right here above his eyes in the forehead and I can feel his whole brain cavity is completely just mushed up. So, impact one, monkey zero. This one happened very quickly. Um, point and shoot, basically. This one was even closer probably 15 meters at most so um put the crosses on his head slug hit right there kind of below the eye and it's interesting with these 26 grain slugs i'm not seeing many exit wounds i think that the hollow point goes so far into the slug that at these at these close distances the whole slug opens up mushrooms and then kind of disintegrates and doesn't exit which is kind of what you want actually the 40 grains, as you saw yesterday, 
in the front of the monkey, out the back, and just keeps on going. Um, but the 26s, 23s, and 21s um, are probably perfect for stuff like this where you just want them to dump all their energy and not really continue very deep. So I'm very glad I had this scope on me once again because from 15 meters with the Theos would have been a bit of a challenge. Vervet monkeys are sneaky little creatures with the ability to hide really well in the bushes. If these monkeys wanted to, they could completely vanish, but they prefer to dance around in a teasing way, which just makes me want to put a bullet in them even more. <laughs> we obviously want to take humane shots, so I wasn't going to launch lead unless I was really sure that I could put in a clean shot. Sometimes you just have to admit defeat. This one didn't get the memo though, so I put a 26 grand javelin right through his head. One of the things I love about the wide field of view on this 5x30 is that you can watch the slug flying so well, even from about 20 meters. You might have noticed that um, in both my impacts, I'm not using the factory, factory magazine. Um, so basically a year ago when I was here, I, I tried out the Eagle Vision uh, slug magazine for the first time. Now, previously I tried the Eagle Vision pellet magazine, but I had lots of problems with the when I was using slugs in that magazine, had problems with them jamming because the spring tension wasn't strong enough. Masood from Eagle Vision remade these, but he made them with a much stronger spring and he made them with the actual uh, compartments for the slugs being a bit smaller. So the skirt of a pellet is quite a bit bigger than the head. The head is around 217, 218 diameter. The skirt is far bigger than that. It's like 220 or bigger um, and what happens if you put a slug in a in a pellet magazine is that sometimes they they jiggle around too much and then when you try and seat them they either shave off material or they seat in skew or stuff goes wrong so this is sized a bit tighter pellet won't fit in here nicely but the slugs fit in really nice uh, it's aluminium um, very very smooth the only downside is that dust can get in here um, so you just have to make sure that every now and again you open it up, you blow any dust out, you clean it out. But awesome magazine, I absolutely love it. And uh, as you can see, it's working really well. Have, I've had absolutely no jams or anything like that. We're starting to get a little bit hungry, so we decide to find a nice shady spot to park off and make some lunch. The wind has picked up pretty severely now, and we weren't planning to take out the rifles anytime soon. But when Yaku spots a troop of monkeys moving through the bush, we bring out the tripod and the impact and attempt to get one or two of them down. I'm not able to find any, but when Yaku spots one, I hand him the impact and he makes the opportunity to count. Mm -hmm. Recording? Yep. Perfect. Teamwork. <laughs> nice. I got it focused for you nicely, yeah. you're the perfect. Man. We've had quite a frustrating morning. Um, it's it's lunchtime now, basically. Um, we've been out the whole morning trying to get monkeys, dussies, whatever we can find. But we just pulled off here under this beautiful big, um, I think it's a fig tree. Mm -hmm. And we uh, we thought, okay, you know what? Let's just take a breather. Let's relax. Let's sit here for a while. Maybe have some snacks, have some lunch. Next thing we know, we see monkeys start walking through. I'm struggling to to find them. Yaku says he sees one. Um, so I said, okay, you can go take the shot. And as he lined up with it, I got the parallax perfect and everything. And uh, took the shot, we just saw this thing drop like perfect. So, yeah, we're gonna go probably try and see if we can find him now. Well, there you go, here's Yaku's monkey. He uh, gave him an opportunity. I managed to get it nicely focused and where did the shot go? Right there, somewhere in the head. So, third headshot of the day. Uh, this time with a big impact and uh, super happy to get this down. We're probably going to just chill here but have, have a quick lunch break and just relax. But who knows what surprises are in store for us. One animal that's right on top of our list is the Chakma baboon. This area is full of them but because they get shot at so much, they're extremely difficult to find. We stumble upon the mother load on this cliffside right above us. And once again, we have to put our lunch plans aside and pick up a rifle. This troop can't see us at all as we're under thick tree cover 
and I'm able to set up on a tripod with a 260 and take my time. There's another one. You see, no, no, no. A little bit less, a little bit up maybe. Oh yeah, I see him. Okay. And record here. Dead. Boon down, we're in a perfect position here in the thick stuff. 183 meters. Um, yeah, the wind's coming really strong now, but um, Boon sat nicely. He couldn't see us here down in the, in the thick stuff. Been able to get on a tripod with a sandbag and take the shot. Man, that was awesome. Well, we are finally able to get the guns away and enjoy our lunch, but it isn't long before we're on the road again and in search of more monkeys. A lot of very leafy vegetation. I've actually got the wrong gun with me right now, to be honest. But managed to get on that one. Just saw his face through the branches, gave him a whistle to get his head in the gap, and then pull the trigger. He was in the thick stuff. I, I was tempted to take a shot while he was sort of in the thick brush, but there's always a chance of sort of the slug hitting a small twig and just being uh, directed off in a different direction. I was patient, he came up, 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 and eventually poked his head right at the top and I was able to put in a good shot, so 40 grand javelin strikes again. <laughs> While looking for monkeys near a small dam, we spot this Cape Shelduck on the water. I have no plans to shoot it, but I hit record anyway just to show how insanely clear this element Theos is. If you're in the market for a tier 1 rifle scope, you'll definitely want to check this one out. Oh man, that was so close. I was actually getting a bit worried there because I felt so comfortable on him. And when I took the shot, I was ex fully expecting him to drop. He didn't, and I thought maybe I'd hit the twig to the left or right of him. Uh, when I check the footage, I see that it just nicked the top of his head. Um, could be me pulling it, could be the slight incline angle, could be a lot of things. But uh, either way, it was it was very, very close. Hopefully we get another opportunity, but that's just how hunting goes. I do get another opportunity a few minutes later, and this one finds its mark. Now that one was a hit. <laughs> just missed the previous one and we were actually in the process of checking the scope cam footage. This time the monkey was not so lucky. Once again, in the thick stuff, uh, I wanted to try and see a clear view of his face and try and weave the slug through a gap. Managed to do that and just saw the concussion as that 40 grand javelin opened up in his face. One thing we haven't done much on this trip is to actually target vervet monkeys with the centrifires. So we head up to an elevated viewpoint and start to glass the valley for little grey faces. The trigger cam has been amazing so far on this Helix HDLR, but one of my gripes with it is that it doesn't have a display to clearly show battery level, and when it starts beeping to tell me it's about to die, it really starts to throw me off as I know I have to rush every shot. I'm able to USB charge it from the car between every shot, but it's not ideal. The monkeys also aren't playing along very well. I do manage to spot a few, but they don't give me much time, and I end up having a few of them disappear before I can arrange them and pull off a shot. No, 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 no. Don't go, don't go, don't go. This just goes to show, just because you have a flat shooting centerfire rifle at your disposal, it doesn't make the contest 
unfair. The monkeys still have the upper hand, and getting any of them down, whether it's with a center fire or an air gun, is an achievement in itself. And after all of that, I miss. Got him. Oh, that was nice. Nice way to end the day. We've been looking for monkeys for ages and just haven't had much luck. We haven't had luck on crows the whole week, but one just happened to sit still long enough and we blitzed him with a 95 grand VMAX. Oh, smell of success. Yes, you are seeing things correctly. We are staying in a cave tonight. <laughs> this place did actually exist last time we came here, but it was completely covered uh, with bushes and completely overgrown. Um, these guys actually cleared out this whole sort of base of this cave, laid some cement down to make it nice and flat and to stop sort of the dusty sand from getting all over the floor. And they've got big plans for this place. So they plan to put some grass down here um, where all the sand is over here. They got uh, running water coming from a, a weir further up that's gonna go to a toilet and a shower and all kinds of things. So it's gonna be quite a, a comfortable place to, to wild camp. And I mean, you can't, you can't beat the solitude and silence of this, of this cliff over here. So we've just pulled in, we're gonna set a few things up and uh, get ready to wind down for the evening after three long days of hunting. So this is all still a work in progress, but if we come around here, they're busy uh, piping up all the, the plumbing. We're gonna have a nice shower around here. And then we're gonna have toilet over there. So in the end, actually pretty comfortable living certainly better than doing your business out in the bush <laughs> after such an epic few days of hunting it's a little bit sad to have to pack the guns away for the last time but these adventures are about so much more than just shooting and as we prepare for our last night in the Bavian's Kloof we soak up every moment as we get ready to cook our dinner and watch the light disappear over the mountains once again, it's been an absolute privilege to be able to bring these adventures to you. If you enjoyed them, please consider subscribing as it takes a lot of time and effort to film and edit everything. And we want to keep the channel growing and keep the content flowing. Next up on A-Arms Hunting SA, we'll be heading back to Wittmoskloof to film the 2023 season of the Oxwagon Diaries. You're not going to want to miss that one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you then.